G'day mates, there's one historical figure that comes to mind when I analyse this ridiculous piece of propaganda masquerading as scientific literature and he goes by the name Josef Goebbels, chief propagandist of the Nazi party. Yes, old Joey boy would be very impressed with this level of BS. It's 30 pages of erroneous disinformation designed for one specific purpose, to mitigate litigation. Make no mistake, my friends, this right here is 30 sheets of one ply TP. And once I'm done making this video, I'm gonna use it to wipe my hairy ass. Let me break the foam down for you all. The propaganda is titled, Philips Respironics Update on Foam Testing Results and Conclusions Available to Date, updated June 28th, 2022. Happy one year anniversary to you all. Hasn't it been just the most amazing year? So much fun. Now, there's four testing methods and I'll explain each one. Number one, visual inspection. Grab a bunch of machines, open them up and have a look at the foam. Is it breaking down? Number two, VOC testing. What nasty organic chemicals are released when the foam breaks down? Number three, particulate matter testing. How many pieces of foam are in the air? How many pieces of foam are in your lungs? Mm. And number four, additional physical, chemical, and biological testing. Testing to see if the degraded foam is toxic when it enters your body. Let's take a look at the results. Test results number one, visual inspection. Philips grabs a bunch of devices, opens them up, pulls out the motor casing where the foam's installed and takes a good hard look to see if there's any evidence of degradation. I don't know, you tell me. It's not exactly transparent, is it? But anyway, let's take a look at the results. The Philips team inspected a total of 60,000 devices across the US and Canada. And out of those, 36,000 reported no ozone use, of which only 0.5% showed visual signs of foam degradation. Only 164 devices. That's great news, what amazing results. But what they don't tell us is how old were those devices they selected? And what climate were they selected from? I would love to see results from a thousand Philips devices selected from tropical climates that are over four to five years old. I wonder what the percentage would be then. Now, it wouldn't be too difficult for Philips to flag devices as they come in for one, age of device, and two, the climate. Is the climate cold and dry, or is it tropical and humid, as this makes a massive difference to the degradation of the foam. So as you can see, the results here are already starting to be distorted to show you lower percentages of degraded foam. Hmm. Part two of the visual inspection test focused on the use of ozone for cleaning. And here's what they found. Out of 11,309 devices inspected, those are devices with self-reported use of ozone, 777, showed visual signs of foam degradation. That's 7%. And I agree with these findings. I've seen firsthand the effect ozone has on the foam. It turns it to mush. So I certainly agree with these findings. However, we need to remember that FDA 483 report, that site inspection, where Philips back in 2015 were already swapping out the foam of the Trilogy ventilators due to the foam breakdown. Also, the engineering emails to the foam suppliers talking about foam breakdown in 2018, well before ozone was a thing. And there's also a bunch of meetings where Philips execs are talking about foam breakdown and what they're gonna do, test reports. There's so much information prior to use of ozone that suggests Philips already had a big, big problem on their hands. Test results number two, VOCs. Now for those that don't know, VOC stands for Volatile Organic Compounds. These are nasty toxic chemicals released from the foam as it breaks down and they can be inhaled 
during use. Now, Philips is claiming that their tests and the tests from independent labs are passing with flying colors. All their devices, the Dream Station 1, Dream Station Go, the Trilogy, they're all passing. But we need to remember that 483 site inspection report from the FDA. Let's go back to that. Documents dated 30th of Jan, 2020. Dream Station 1 devices failed emissions testings for VOC and aldehydes, specifically that tolerable limits for formaldehyde compound were exceeded. One minute they're failing VOC tests, next minute, 100 legal cases and a whole bunch of class actions, and all of a sudden, tick, 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 it just doesn't make sense. Test results number three, particulate matter emissions. Now these tests are designed to quantify the level of foam particles in the air that could potentially be inhaled into your lungs. And the way they do this is they set up a filter material on the outside of the device and they weigh this filter. And then they run air through the device and then they weigh the filter again. And this gives them an indication as to how many foam particles are captured in that filter material. All right, let's go through it. The results. Results suggest degradation did not contribute to appreciable elevated levels of respirable, respirable particles, even in devices with significant vision. Fuck me, Phillips, you fuckwit. Here we go. Results suggest degradation did not contribute to appreciable elevated levels of respirable particles, even in devices with significant visible foam degradation. Now that's a tick. However, testing was performed internally. Why on earth do they not outsource this testing to independent labs? I think we know the reason and get this, Testing was performed at 75 litres per minute. That is, there's 75 litres per minute of air pushed through the device to capture on the filter on the outside of the device. Now, according to the Philips Dream Station manual, even at only four centimetres of pressure, the average flow is 85 litres per minute. And at 12 centimetres of pressure, this jumps up to 131 litres per minute, a 75% increase. Now what do I mean by this? Imagine you're running air through the dream station, okay, and you're running it at 75 litres per minute. That's not a whole lot of airflow, okay? It's not going to pick up a whole lot of foam particles from inside that turbine casing. Where is it? From inside here, where the air flows. Now if you increase that airflow by 75%, it's going to pick up a whole lot more foam particles that are not gonna be picked up in the initial internal tests. Complete and utter BS. And finally, test results number four. Additional tests, physical, biological, and chemical tests to see if the foam particles are toxic if they are inhaled into your body, into your lungs. There's no denying the test number four is a complete and utter disaster for Philips. The foam is toxic. It's genotoxic, causes your DNA to mutate, cancer. Cytotoxic, causes your cells to die, and it's an irritant. Who knows what toxic effects it has when it's inhaled deep inside your lungs, which is why Philips is working so hard to manipulate the data of tests one, two, and three, to try and demonstrate that the likelihood of that foam being inhaled into your lungs is extremely low. I don't think it is. And now we reach our climactic ending, silicone foam testing in response to FDA request in November, 2021. So in November, 2021, when Philips did that site inspection, they found a report it was a failed safety test report of the new silicone foam that they have put inside the Dream Station 2 and the replacement recall devices. It was a failed test. The FDA finds this test and goes, hang on, <laughs> what's going on here? Phillips, we need some new independent lab results 
to show that the replacement foam, the new foam, is safe and effective. Now, I bet my right nut that those test results, those new test results, are going to come back positive. Like all these VOC tests on the old foam, Philips will find a way to make them come back positive, okay, for VOCs and everything else. But I can tell you straight down the lens right here that I am receiving emails, photos, evidence that that silicone foam is breaking up. It is finding its way into the humidification chamber of the Dream Station 2, of the Dream Station 1 replacement devices. I have the photos, I've seen it, okay? Now, I've also felt this foam. It is extremely delicate. It, it flakes off in your hands. Now, and this is brand new. I would hate to see what it's like in two years time with 20 centimeters of pressure rushing past that foam time and time again. Now, that foam might not be a hazard if it enters your body, but I can tell you right now, it's not doing your device any good. If that foam's accumulating inside the motor, uh, the device is just not gonna last. Until next time, guys, look after your mates, sleep well, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Just another recall on the balance sheet But I can't breathe It's time that I perform the deep on the deep Foam in the wind All they are is foam G'day mates, how about we throw another pap on the barbie? 
How do you like your pap? Well done. Yeah. There's a lot of pap on the barbie. You'll need a how, do fire. Get, how do we get the pep off the barbie? <laughs> get the pep off the barbie. You need the fire extinguisher. Dad, get the fire extinguisher. 